So, Dr. Quinn, what do you do to help your patients who have problems with sleeping? Well, Jay, we have a lot of patients to come in and they complain of not being able to fall asleep or not being able to stay asleep or, or just not getting that good quality sleep. The first thing we do is we evaluate the patient to figure out what's the cause. I mean, there's so many causes. The first thing we look at is their sleep hygiene. Are they sleeping in a dark, quiet, cool room that's uninterrupted for an extended period of time, seven to nine hours. If they have good sleep hygiene, then we look at their medication. Some people's medicines can keep them up at night. And if that's not the case, we do a medical exam, of course, and some medical conditions can cause you to have problems with sleeping, such as sleep apnea. You can have restless leg syndrome, and then there are others. But then we also look at a psychological evaluation, maybe worry, anxiety, depression. These can also lead to problems with sleep. But once we identify the cause, we can effectively provide the treatment and help that person get that good night of sleep that they so very much deserve. And sleep is so important. I mean, your body repairs itself when you sleep. So how much sleep do we really need? Well, according to the CDC, Adults need approximately seven to nine hours of sleep every night. But for younger uh, uh, people, such as children, uh, newborns, and zero to three months, I'm reading straight from the CDC, 14 to 17 hours, they need that sleep. Infants, four to 12 months of age, they need anywhere from 12 to 16 hours. And then as they get older, toddlers, maybe 11 to 14, and then school children, anywhere from nine to 12. So children need a little bit more sleep, but it's so important we get that sleep. I also want to add that a lot of people don't get enough sleep during the week. And on the weekend, they want to make up and get a lot of sleep. That's not the answer because what it does is it sets you up for failure the upcoming week because let's hypothetically say on Sunday you miss church and you sleep all the way to 12 or 1 o'clock. Well, on Sunday night, you're not going to be sleepy. Your circadian rhythm is going to be off. So it's, it's a good idea to try to stay consistent and go to bed at the same time and wake up the same time next morning every week. Mm -hmm. So you really can never make up for lost sleep, can you? It, it, it is not really because like the, 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 what the experts are recommending is to try to be consistent. You want to go to bed about the same time and wake up the same time. And what it does is it helps to keep your circadian rhythms in, in sync so that you can get that rested sleep and your body will be used to it and it can adjust properly. Can someone sleep too much? <laughs> That's a good question. Too much of a good thing. There was a study with the uh, Journal of American Heart Association that linked too much sleep, and that's more than 10 hours a day. Imagine that uh, with different cardiovascular problems. But then there was a question, maybe those individuals had underlying problems early on, and it caused them to sleep too much. But the take home was, if someone is sleeping not enough or too much, go be evaluated by your doctor so they can evaluate because some underlying medical conditions such as heart disease and diabetes can cause you to have problems with your sleep. And just make sure that you talk to your doctor and let them know so that they can look for treatment and help you get that sleep you deserve. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Dr. Quinn, for joining us.